In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you should be pricing your Webflow websites in order to get paid more and have happier clients. Let's get started. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Now, before we dive into the video, I wanna know what are you charging for a Webflow website? So drop down to the comments, plug in how much you're charging. I'm hoping that that's gonna give us a really good idea of what different freelancers are charging and it might even help raise the bar and your expectations a little bit. Now, when it comes to pricing your Webflow websites, there are a number of things that we need to consider and these are oftentimes things that your clients don't consider and so it's gonna be up to us to kind of manage this and make sure that you're getting paid enough. Now, a lot of times clients think when they pay us for a Webflow development project, they're just paying for our time when in reality they're going to be paying for our expertise they're going to be paying for the time that it took us to learn the things that we know and that we've taken the time to get good at they're going to be covering our overhead all of the tools that we use there are a lot of different things that go into running a business even if you're a freelance web designer and so we need to make sure that when we're pricing our projects that we're taking all of these things into consideration and pricing accordingly. Now, if a client doesn't understand that or doesn't appreciate that, do not take on the project because I promise that's going to be a huge hassle for you. So for me, when I started out years ago, I wasn't really sure how to price my projects and I had just started with Webflow. I didn't necessarily know exactly what I was doing and so I was kind of just pricing, um, I was like shooting from the hip, right? Every project I would meet with the prospect and I would just kind of guess um, how long I thought the project would take or how big of a hassle it was going to be. And I would just kind of pull a number out of thin air and throw it out there and if they agreed to it, oftentimes I would get halfway through the project and I would realize, oh man, I didn't charge enough. I didn't take a lot of these things into consideration. And so it got really frustrating. And what I saw is sometimes I would have two websites that were um, the same scope, same amount of work, and one of them might be charging twice as much. And I would look at this and say, man, I should have charged this much for both of the projects. And so this was a really bad way to go about things. The other thing that I saw is if I didn't have like a set pricing plan or a set number or way to quantify how much I was doing and how much it was going to cost, I would get into these sales calls and I would kind of chicken out and I would undershoot that price, right? And if I didn't have something to kind of hold myself to a standard, I would always undercharge. And this in turn would result in the obvious, which is I wasn't getting paid as much as I should, but also the clients undervalued me because I wasn't charging enough. So after some trial and error with this, I made a transition and we kind of evolved our pricing structure. So we were pricing per page. Now, this worked much better and it was a little bit easier to anticipate the scope of a project and know exactly how much um, I was going to take home, especially as I started to build a team, I needed to know exactly how much each page was going to cost me and then I was going to need to charge accordingly to make sure that after I paid all of those expenses, I paid my people, that I had some margin to take home, right? And so these were all things that I had to consider and pricing per page made it much easier, but I still was seeing a lot of friction in this process and what I realized at this point was all of the friction was coming from the design aspect of our project if we could get through the design um, you know filling or like creating everything in Figma and then getting it to the point where we were ready to develop in Webflow things would go much faster at that point point. and so what I realized at this point is these two services web design and Webflow development are very very different now I might just be an idiot and maybe all of you know this already but the fact that these were so different it didn't make sense that I was lumping them all into one project and just throwing out a number because these different services are going to have different needs and when it comes to design they may want something way more custom that takes twice as long and when it comes to Webflow development they may want a super complex CMS backend or they may just want a very basic um, site developed and so these were all things that I needed to take into consideration so what I did is I split these services up and started charging for them independently on a per page basis and so when somebody would come to me and they wanted a website built one of the first questions I would ask is do you have the designs ready for this project and if they didn't they would be um, first off kind of surprised because they didn't even realize that these were two different things 
but it helped them understand and me understand what it was that they needed. And so if this is the case that they didn't have the designs, I would bring them to this service first and say, okay, here's our design process. Here's my design team that you're going to be working with. And this is the price um, per page on these designs. And then once we finish that, then we can bring those over and develop them. Now, I loved doing this because first off, it was helping me manage my timelines better because I wasn't making this promise that we were gonna have a site live in four weeks only to real, uh, realize that we had four weeks of design work and then we were gonna move over to development. But also it gave me the ability to bring on clients that already had their designs ready and I could charge them accordingly just over here in the development um, service that I was offering, right? And so by doing this, you're going to be able to kind of keep the processes separate and really streamlined and you're going to be able to put a timeline on design and then another timeline on development and it's going to help you keep within scope, it's going to help you price accordingly and it's going to make it really, really easy for you to price things in a way that you're going to have some money to take home after all is said and done. So to give you an example of how this pricing structure works, let's just say in this example that we have a Webflow development um, project that's going to be between one and five pages. And so rather than put an exact number on each page, I'm going to give a ballpark. So on this one to five page development project, let's just say the ballpark is $4,000 to $9,000. Now, the reason that I do this ballpark is it allows me to adjust based on a couple different things. Now, when you're bringing on a new project, especially as you're growing, you're going to have to take into account your availability, how extensive the designs are going to be. So, right, if they have a landing page that's forever long, you're going to want to charge on the higher end to account for all of that work. You're also going to want to take into account maybe different integrations that they have or might need or different complex CMS solutions within their Webflow site. Now, if you can set this ballpark and then get a good feel for everything that is going to be included within the scope of this project, then you can find a range within that ballpark and the hope is that it's going to be on the higher end of that ballpark. Now, the reason that I love doing this is it doesn't tie you into a specific price if they're going to be asking for way more on each and every page, but also, if you have a client that, for example, has a very basic three-page website that doesn't really utilize any CMS, no integrations, it's gonna be very basic, they've got their Figma designs already ready, it's gonna be super easy for you to hit the lower end of that ballpark range, let's just say it's right at that $4,000, because you know that you can pump out that project really quickly, you're gonna be able to cover all of your expenses, you're gonna be able to pay your team and have enough to take home that it makes sense to take on that project. So if you're currently having a hard time pricing your Webflow projects or you feel like things just aren't streamlined enough, get in and revamp your pricing and really lay out exactly what's included in each and every tier. And I promise you that not only will you be happier and more well taken care of financially, but also your clients are gonna be happier because they know exactly what to expect and you're not going to have those awkward conversations mid-project where you're trying to figure out exactly what falls within scope, or if you have to charge them more, um, you're gonna be able to avoid those conversations altogether. So the last thing that I'll say is always charge what you're worth or more because what I found is the clients that pay me the most always respect me the most and they appreciate my expertise. And so don't undercut yourself, don't undervalue your work because I promise you that as you raise those prices and can deliver enough value to match that price, your clients are going to be thrilled and so are you. So if you found any value in this video, please click that like button down below. That really helps me out. I also would love it if you would subscribe because we've got new videos like this one coming out each and every week. So thanks so much and we'll catch you in the next video.